What's the first piece we're going to hear? The first piece you're going to hear is Milonga uh, al Sur uh, by Alfonso Montes. We have here our, our students, uh, Matthew uh, Rock and Nicholas Tripodis. Uh, they're going to be playing this duet for us. Honored to have you with us. Beautiful, beautiful, fantastic! Wow, what a what a gorgeous sound! What a gorgeous sound! Um, well, I know we'll have some folks asking about uh, the types of guitars and things like that while everybody's switching out here to the next group. Um, what? Uh, tell us about the classical guitar. Tell us about the nylon string guitar. So the nylon string guitar, uh, the beauty of the nylon string guitar, uh, in my opinion, uh, um, one of the things that made me really interested in classical guitar when I, when I first started. I started as a rock player, but very early I discovered classical guitar. Uh -huh. And just the, the possibility of colors uh -huh. and different sounds 
and when you use your nail and uh, angle that you attack the string, you can get a more like a brighter sound or a, a, a more like dolce kind of sound, right, right. Um, a warmer. So, uh, and also the possibility of separating voices, polyphony, and playing different things, yes. uh, different textures, um, and and uh, also the repertoire. You know, right. everything from from the Renaissance to the 21st century. We have a variety of music. Right. Uh, from classical, with influence of you know popular music here in the 21st century. So, and the, and the instrument itself differs from the steel string acoustic. The neck is a little bit wider. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, strings, of course, made out of uh, nylon, so they they give a little bit more than a regular steel string instrument as well. Mm -hmm. Now, none of these are all these instruments that you're hearing tonight. These are all mic'd, so none of them have a. a, a pickup in it or not, you're not hearing any sort of electric sound so it's strictly the the sound of the guitar exactly mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the the next piece that we're mm -hmm. we're gonna listen to okay the next piece is a piece by a brazilian composer uh marco pereira mm -hmm. who i actually met he's also he's from brazil uh mm -hmm. he lives in rio de janeiro right now and mm -hmm. uh he's actually really good friends with one of my my old teachers really and, uh, and, and you're from brazil I'm as well from, yeah i'm from brazil yes mm -hmm. and um so Marco is an interesting guitarist because he has a classical training. Mm -hmm. he's, he's an amazing guitarist, but he's heavily influenced by Brazilian popular music. Mm -hmm. So uh, music, uh, from samba, from music from the northeast of Brazil. Mm -hmm. And he's a terrific composer who, who has written a lot for solo guitar, has arranged a lot of things, has written duos, trio quartets. And today here we're going to hear this trio uh, called Balada, Balada, a ballad. So it's mm -hmm. a slower, more relaxed kind of song. Mm -hmm. Uh, so and, and who's who's playing? Who, who we are have, these wonderful we have, uh, musicians? So we're going to start over there. We start with Sophia, uh, and here we have uh, Cayman, mm -hmm. and in the middle uh, John. So uh, they are three. Uh, they are uh, in our commercial guitar program, mm -hmm. uh, but in our commercial guitar, we're going to also offer uh, classical lessons. And mm -hmm. you know, we believe that you know, trying to pair a little bit of classical training with commercial music is really important. Right. So that's part of their the work they do for their degree. They're in some their classical guitar ensemble. Wonderful. Well, I look forward to hearing them.
beautiful. 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 Harmonies on that one. And yeah, just beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Ma uh, Marco has, you know, his training like jazz and, and uh, lots of different styles. It's really, really amazing. And it's interesting to listen to a piece like that because he writes a lot of upbeat Brazilian, um, uh, very, very uh, intricate rhythms and all that. And it's nice to see this wide range uh, mm -hmm. that he has as a composer with like a slow uh, slow and beautiful piece like that. Now, you've met him. Have you, have you played with him? I, I met him once, uh, briefly. Mm -hmm. he, I'm from Sao Paulo and he's from Rio. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, we haven't played yet, but I, I hope sometime in the future. We have lots of friends in Como and uh, uh, my teacher is really, really good friends with him. So, uh, and he's actually one was a uh, strong in influence for me when I started right. because he really puts together the classical side with... Uh, the more popular uh, jazz, Brazilian kind yeah. of style. So. Yeah. Well, uh, Paulo is, a, is an amazing guitarist in his own right. And uh, no, is, kind. It, <laughs> is, it is a, a joy to have you here and, and uh, be a part of things. What are, what are we going to hear next? Next, we have a work by Massimo Diego Pujol uh, called Sombrio. And we have uh, Rachel Chalmers over there. And uh, Sean Janay, Rachel is a music education major, and uh, Sean is a commercial guitar major who is also a great classical guitarist. Now, are they are are, are you guys juniors or sophomores or what? What are you? I'm a junior. You're, I'm a freshman. You're a freshman. Oh well, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful.
I love it. I love it. I love it. Just, you know, Belmont is one of the uh, premier um, places for learning music in the nation, and they are putting out some of the best musicians in the land, and uh, we're so honored that they are right here in Nashville, right on Music Row. If you are interested in learning more about Belmont, you can go to probably belmont.edu, mm -hmm. I would yeah, think. Yeah. And, uh, slash music. Uh, yeah, 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 slash yeah, music, yeah, and that'll get you to the music mm -hmm. department. And uh, this is their guitar ensemble, of, of which is just a portion of all the great things that they've got going on. The, I've, I know your commercial studies, mm -hmm. uh, I'm familiar with those, and jazz studies, mm -hmm. and all kinds commercial of things. Commercial classical studies, yeah. What are, what are the different majors for a guitarist? Well, you have a few options there. Um, if you decide, well, if you decide to go through the commercial route, then mm -hmm. you have different, different emphases you can have. Mm -hmm. You can have commercial guitar with... Uh, uh, music tech, music business, uh, composition, arranging, have mm -hmm. all those routes for commercial. But if you decide to go the classical route, you can just mm -hmm. be a, you know, a, a BM in classical guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also, we have students from other um, areas like music therapy or music education mm -hmm. who also have guitar as their principal instrument. Mm -hmm. So uh, even if you are not a guitar major, uh, you, don't, you are not getting a bachelor's in guitar, if you're in another um, program, you can still take guitar because you need to choose an instrument. So some of our students here today, they're from the music therapy program, mm -hmm. our music education program. So we have this variety of... Uh, we had one of our, one of our uh, folks ask, uh, Skip Russell asks, are the students sight reading? Um, and the short answer to that is no, they are not sight reading, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, although I'm sure they can sight read very well. Uh, this is from a recent program that they did, is exactly. that correct? Exactly. They played a concert a few weeks ago at Belmont University. Uh, every semester, uh, the ensemble plays a concert there mm -hmm. uh, with different program every, sem every semester. Uh, and the way it works, they start the semester. The, the, uh, Robert Thompson is the mm -hmm. one who does that, that job mm -hmm. really well. Yeah. Uh, and um, so they pick the pieces, they work together, they are... Uh, they, they meet with uh, uh, Robert twice a week, mm -hmm. and they have their, uh, their um, I think for one hour and a half, I believe, um, and they have this rotation where each week, they, uh, they play for each other too, so, it, mm -hmm. so it's really great, and then they have their concert. Uh, besides that, they also have, uh, have their lessons, their classical lessons, right, right, uh, right. even if they're commercial, as I mentioned earlier. If they're commercial, you still have to take classical lessons, and uh, that I also teach uh, those those yeah. lessons, and Robert's the ensemble director. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. And there's uh, 20 guitarists, you said, in yeah, the ensemble? But, yeah, yeah here around. today, yeah, but I think a few, uh, a few are not here today. The, the, so it's the, even larger than that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, okay, gosh, we need to keep going. What mm -hmm. is? What are we going to hear next? Well, next we're going to hear uh, Danza Brasileira by Jorge Morel. Morel. Uh, uh, just, uh, just a detail here, Jorge Morel is not from Brazil. He's uh -huh. from Argentina, but uh -huh. he, you know, he always is a great composer um, who is very interested in Brazilian music. So uh -huh. we're going to get a, a Brazilian music coming from uh, an Argentinian composer. And who are these wonderful folks? Well, we, I, we have two uh, students here from the uh, music therapy program, Hannah uh, Keglovitz. I got you right, huh? <laughs> and, and Adam Schrodinger, mm -hmm. almost. I'll get there. I'm practicing. I <laughs> practiced those earlier. <laughs> and I recognize mm -hmm. Hannah from mm -hmm. um, the last time we were here. That's right. You guys were here uh, several months ago, and you were in the ensemble back then. So, all right.
Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. I see everybody here is is enjoying that. Um, uh, we, Deborah is asking on online uh, what guitars are they using? Well, of course, everybody's using a a, a, a different guitar. Um, Adam, what, what guitar are you playing? Uh, this there? is just a basic Lucero. I picked it up at my local guitar center mm -hmm. when starting at Belmont University, mm -hmm. and it's 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 handled me beautifully. Yeah, and and what are year are you? Are you a junior? You I'm a sophomore. You're finishing sophomore. Finishing up my second year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's your major? Music therapy. Music therapy. Uh, Belmont, one of the few places in the nation, and one of the best that is offering music therapy degrees. I think the only place, well, maybe Lipscomb might have a, a little program too, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Belmont is, is certainly doing great things with music therapy, a wonderful need in, in uh, the music world. More people need to be doing that, so that's great. Thank you guys so much. Okay, we've got another duet coming here. Um, who, who, who are we having? What are we listening to? We're going to have uh, Luke Sunderland and um, Madeline Varnathos. So the program today, uh, most of the program today is... Uh, comprised of uh, South American music. Mm -hmm. So far we uh, listen to music from, from Venezuela, from Argentina, from Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but now uh, we are going to listen to a Spanish piece. Okay. But the interesting thing about that is that we have that Hispanic connection there. So mm -hmm. uh, those, those pieces go, go really well together. This piece is by the great uh, composer Manuel de Falla, mm -hmm. uh, Spanish composer, with this arrange, uh, arrangement by Emilio Pujol, the piece Spanish uh, dance uh, number one from La Vida Breve. La Vida Breve was an opera, oh, as an okay. opera that uh, Manuel de Falla wrote. And I have this arrangement here by Emilio Pujol. Uh, and Do you know about when he, record, he, he oh, composed this? Is this uh, is I, he, don't, I don't have the exact is date. This, 1950s? Is this the 1920s? When is when is this? That, that uh, yeah, he, I think, I think his, first half, his first half, definitely the first half, uh, I actually have some notes here. So... Uh, I should I two, didn't uh, need to spring, yeah, spring no, it's, you on It's that. an opera in two acts and mm -hmm. four scenes by Manuel de Falla. Uh, but, um, Do you know when it debuted? Um, let me see if I have here. Uh, I don't have the debut, but it's, that, it's probably, you know, first half, I would say, because okay. he died in 1980, I believe. Okay. So. Uh, but he, he composed a lot of stuff early in his career, so yeah. I would say, you know, uh, kind of mid 20th century. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. If you guys are ready, we'd love to hear it. Thank you. 
yes, yes. Now, I've got a question. Um, Madeline, is, uh, are the guitars standard tuning for this one, or is yours, is yours down a little this bit? This is tuned down. I'm in drop you're, D. You're in drop D. So everything is normal, just the low D is down Correct. in drop D. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought I heard a little bit lower, <laughs> a lower bass than, than normal there. <laughs> Beautiful. If you want to learn more about Belmont, check them out at belmont.edu. And you can check out their incredible music program. One of the questions we had here, John, in fact, was asking, um, can we visit Belmont while you're here at our Summer Guitar Gathering Conference, which is in June? You can visit, but there's probably not going to be, all of these guys are going to be on a beach somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. It's summertime. They'll be long gone by then. Um, so uh, you're welcome to visit. It's a, it's a beautiful university. They actually have the uh, guitar collection there, too, that uh, Groons helped Mm -hmm. put together was the, the guitar collection out there. So yes, it is an amazing place to come visit. They will still have some classes going on. Our conference is kind of early June 12th through the 15th, so I don't know if the summer session yeah, started well, yet Well, if they go then. to the website, uh, on, like on their faculty, they have our emails there. Mm -hmm. They're welcome to, to send uh, uh, one of the guitar faculty an email. Mm -hmm. well, we always have at least one or two teachers teaching there, so it, it, they might be able to find somebody, and just, at least you know to, to get to know a little bit about the school. We won't, as you said, we won't have all our students there, yeah. but we still offer some guitar classes during the summer. In the summer. Mm -hmm. And again, Robert Thompson, our good friend, is the head of the, the uh, guitar ensemble department of which you're hearing featured tonight. We've got a quartet. We've got I a see. Quartet. What are we uh, what are we uh, what are we doing? Now we have uh, another piece by a Brazilian composer Armando Neves called mm -hmm. Mafua. It's a choro, mm -hmm. uh, the famous Brazilian choro, and we have this quartet here with these great students. I believe you guys are all freshmen, correct? Wow. So we have a group of freshmen here and uh, we have uh, let's start over there Alex Kendall, Molly Katz, Jared Sims and Alex uh, Mondine. Uh, so they, they are all the commercial guitar program, I believe. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, a few of them are my private students. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so I know those guys pretty well. <laughs> good, good, uh, good, good. Yeah, so we're gonna, you're gonna we, and we are gonna listen to this show by Armando Neves. Fantastic. Called Mafua.
Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, now, I know some of those guitars are tuned down, or maybe at least the low ones. What What do you tune to? Drop D. Drop, J drop D as well. Okay. All right. Good, good. And everybody else is in standard tuning yeah. for that? Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Whew. Okay. Wow. I am loving this. Um, Jerome is, is asking, do they ever say what brand of guitars that they are using? Well, there's different, several different brands that are out there and you can spend 200 bucks like I spent on mine or you can spend $10,000 on you. Yeah, and a lot, lot of great brands but also a lot of uh, handmade guitars too. So yeah. especially for classical, it's yeah. very common that more advanced players even use uh, handmade instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, classical guitar do you play? I play a guitar by a Brazilian uh, Brazilian maker. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, his name is Joacir Carvalho. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, I actually own a couple of his guitars. One Beautiful. I keep here in the US, I keep another one in Brazil. Mm -hmm. it's different woods, one is Brazilian rosewood and the mm -hmm. other one is Indian rosewood. Mm -hmm. uh, and both spruce guitars. So. Now, mm -hmm. being from Brazil, how did you uh, how did you come across Nashville and, and Belmont? Oh, that's a, that's a, qu a good question. I'm going to try to give you the abbreviated version <laughs> of it. But I, I moved to the U.S. about uh, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. I came here for grad school, so mm -hmm. I, I did my master's and then uh, my doctorate at University of Colorado. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there was an opening here at uh, Belmont University, mm -hmm. so I applied and I uh, was fortunate to you get the job and, Wonderful. and here I get to work with these really talented students teaching both classical guitar and jazz guitar, commercial guitar, which are, which I love. You know, right. I love this kind of combination of styles. So yeah. Yeah. Belmont's a great place for that. Oh, great place. Mm -hmm. I saw actually on your Facebook page, uh, a thing that you recently did with, uh, Duffy Jackson? Oh, yes, that's correct. Yeah, he was our, our yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> he's amazing. Yeah. I want to get him for our summer conference. Duffy Jackson, uh -huh. he's a drummer. Uh, but he's played with everybody, Count Basie and Ella mm -hmm. Fitzgerald, and, and he is a hoot. He is hilarious. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm tossing around an idea of doing a jazz camp. Just going to throw that out there. Don't have all the details yet, but I'm thinking about it. We're trying to work that out to try and have a jazz camp. Mm -hmm. Um, we can help with that. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, but what a, what I watched a little bit of your playing on that, and great, and he was uh, definitely was great, and uh, yeah, just amazing. Uh, thank you. All right, so we have one more um, quartet more, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, playing a taroba piece, which I'm uh, a little bit familiar with. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, taroba, tell us about what, what yeah. we're going to hear. So, yeah, so uh, now from South America, we go back to Spain again. Mm -hmm. Taroba was a great composer in the 20th century. He was one, called one of... Uh, uh, he was one of the guys who wrote for Segovia, the great mm -hmm. Spanish guitarist. Mm -hmm. And he has, uh, he, has, he has lots of great compositions for solo guitar mm -hmm. and uh, great pieces also for, for guitar ensemble. And this one, it's called uh, Bailando un Fandango Charo from uh, Estampas. And I believe that's, uh, they're going to be playing just uh, one of those movements. Uh, that's the first one, I believe. Uh, and this and this group, we also have a few freshmen in second year. So I know that uh, we have Alex again and uh, uh, Nick Nick Palmer and Adrian Connolly and Anthony Russo. Are you guys? You guys are second year guys, sophomores, right? Oh, you're we're freshmen. you're freshmen and you are sophomore. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we have some young players here today. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you. 
wonderful, wonderful. Uh, let's answer a couple of questions here that are starting to come up here. Ron is asking, uh, are the students, are, this, is the, are these their personal guitars or do the university provide them? That's their personal guitars. So yes. That's their instrument. That'd be nice if the university <laughs> provided a guitar. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> but uh, I'd like the university to provide guitars for everyone. Uh, guitars for everyone. Uh, uh, no, this is their, all, that's their, their own instruments. They use it. They need it all the time because they're mm -hmm. always practicing. Yeah, yeah. And they're switching. <laughs> At least they should be. But those, those kids actually, uh, they, were, they work very hard, as and, you can see here. And mm -hmm. they're switching between instruments as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're, you're, you know, for even within the same day, you're playing classical, then you're playing mm -hmm. uh, electric, and you're playing jazz for one class. You're playing, uh, have, may have a classical lesson or something like that, especially mm -hmm. the guitar majors. I know they're switching mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. in styles quite a bit. Um, while we have our last duo coming up here, uh, duet coming up, while they're getting settled, let me kind of give some closing announcements here. Um, well, in this fun, I love doing these Belmont shows. These are great. All right, I th I'd like to thank our wonderful producer, who you guys never see, but uh, David Winkert is making all sure all the cameras and all the, the tech is working good, and Stephen Quinn, our wonderful assistant, is doing the chat tonight and handling a lot of the audio things. Uh, you may have not seen it, but most of our tech has changed uh, with this program. So we've got new laptops, new switchers, everything has changed. Um, so I'm thrilled that we're actually not having any technical hiccups. So, uh, and it's thanks to these wonderful folks that serve us. Thank our, our um, moderators, Doug and Neil, um, who have wonder been answering questions and putting up links all night long. So... Uh, Thank you guys for all of that. We've got one more song that they want to do. Um, Deborah is also asking, we've got a question here about practicing. How do they practice a piece? Can you talk to us a little bit about um, what goes on into preparing a piece like these? Well, um, in the case of this ensemble, here the ensembles you guys heard today, uh, uh, they get those pieces at the beginning of the semester, mm -hmm. uh, and they, they are assigned, they have... They meet twice a week with uh, Robert, where they prepare mm -hmm. uh, those. They meet for an hour and a half. So during this time, they have this rotation where they, where they rehearse. Mm -hmm. or they're either rehearsing or they are having a coaching. Mm -hmm. And they also meet outside class, yeah. uh, you know, on the weekend. And they try to find, because as we all know, music requires a lot of time and dedication. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, some of those pieces, uh, they start reading really slowly, uh, working on smaller chunks, mm -hmm. make sure that they get them together. Um, um, and it's nice because they had their, their, their recital a few weeks ago and they did all this work. So it's great for them to have a chance to perform it again here because yeah. after all this work, it's right, nice right. to have uh, to be able to perform more than one time. So it's a process that, you know, it requires a lot of patience. Some of those pieces are, are tricky and uh, sometimes tricky to sight read. So it takes a while for it to find where everything is and you have to polish uh, all the whole the dynamic of, of the chamber music, right? Mm -hmm. So a blend tone and dynamics, learning the notes and the rhythm is just one step. Yeah. And after you learn that, uh, uh, you work on, on style, you work on dynamics, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and try to develop a sense of ensemble. Yeah. One of the and goals. there's memorization as part of memorization that Memorization well. is part of that too. Although some of them may have the music in front of them here, it's a reference, They, they but I mean, they, they know pretty much the whole, all the music. But right. it's like a reference sometimes to follow, but they, they've been working on it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no easy road. Uh, no, there is not. <laughs> but, it's a, you know, but it's fun, though, that we enjoy the, the, the journey. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, don't believe anybody who's trying to sell you something to tell you it's easy. Mm -hmm. It all comes down to good information, knowing what to do, and then spending some time with your instrument and uh, sitting in the practice room, sitting on your couch, whatever figuring it out. It's a lonely um, uh, part of it, but it is what gets the job done. We had uh, uh, at the university that I teach at, Joe Robinson came and, and spoke to our guitar majors, and I know he's spoken to y'all yes, uh, mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe, who is an Olympian of practicing, um, you know, everybody, he gets up and, and you see these wonderful players hop up and you think, oh, wouldn't it be great to do? You don't realize the 95% of the time that was sit, spent sitting in a practice room getting all that technique done. And uh, there's no easy way to do it, but that's how, it, that's how it's done. And that's where the magic has happened. So part of the joy is 
learning to enjoy that daily getting in and working with your instrument. So it's a joy to have you guys here with us. All right, so tell us about this last piece. Well, uh, the last piece that we are going to listen is Cancion, uh, also by Alfonso Montes. So we started the concert with a piece by Alfonso Montes, Venezuelan composer. Mm -hmm. and we are going to end also with this piece. Just before they play, I just would like to thank you for, you know, for having the students here, especially for me, it was a pleasure to meet you for the first time today yes. at this really beautiful place. If, it's just a great feeling to be surrounded by so many wonderful instruments yes. and such a great environment, a great opportunity for the students to perform and yes. get more experience. And thanks for everything you do for our guitar community. You bet. It's an honor mm -hmm. to work with you guys. So honored that y'all would be here. Mm -hmm. I wish we could turn the camera around. You could see this whole room full of guitars. Maybe we can. But we'll, mm -hmm. I'll have to talk to our tech guys. <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, turn the camera around. You get to see all of yeah, these say wonderful hi. Say hi, guys. folks there. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. We got one more great piece for you. And, and, we have, uh, and he, sorry, we have here we have a Declan Nelligan and Dermot Berg. Uh, see if you agree with me. I think this is a great name for a duo: Declan Nelligan and Dermot Berg. I was just telling this today. Like, just a perfect. You guys should those names. You, a uh, uh, good name is important. You guys already have that. <laughs> and the right. music is great too. So great combination. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much Thank Arnold, for you. being here with us. What a, what a joy. And all of you crazy nuts out there <laughs> playing guitar. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, keep up the great work in your own uh, learning. Playing music is a wonderful thing. It's worth it. It's worth it. We'll see you guys next time.